Hi there, and welcome to After Hours, tips for composers writing for flute. I want to talk about pizzicati sounds today. Now, you might see them in the wild like this. There are various kinds of accepted notations these days, but this is the very basic one. There are different types of pizzicati. You've probably heard of tongue pizzicati, lip pizzicati. And I'll tell you right away, you won't hear the difference between them and really unless they're under amplification. I'll give you an example here. That's the lip pizzicati. And that's the tongue pizzicati. You hear there's, there's a kind of a difference, but you know, in the, if you're writing for an ensemble piece, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. That's another point is that these sounds will not carry. Uh, they have no harmonic content. They're not going to compete with a bass clarinet slap. They're not going to compete with a slamming of a piano lid. As I said, it's really like a dead sound. It's like I take a pencil and go... And the flute doesn't help much. It's not a very big resonating body. Speaking of resonance and octaves, the first octave is really the only octave that's going to work for this. I mean, you can write higher pitches. I'll play for you a three octave chromatic scale using a lip pitch, for example. You'll hear what happens. So as you see, not so much resonance when you go up. This is why they're also great for alto and bass flute, especially in the first octaves, you can really get a honk. So that's pizzicati sounds in a nutshell. They don't carry, they're dead sounds, but they can be really effective under amplification. Okay, I hope this helps you. Have a great evening.